Welcome to a Typhoon Con CTF 2022 write up video. In this video, we'll be walking through the reverse engineering challenge, Key Gen Me. Let's get into it. This is just a standard key generator, or is it? And they say the flag format, there's no SSD or curly braces. Okay, so I have the challenge over here. You'll see I have a solve.py script. That's what I use to solve the challenge. So let's go ahead and maximize this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to run CTF challenge first. And doesn't matter. We're just testing the functionality and it looks like, well, we're trying to find the password. All right, so let's open this up in Cutter. You know, good old Cutter. The Radari 2 GUI. And we'll open it up in the background so we can refer back to it if we need to. It's taking a minute to load because it's a pretty substantially large file, sort of. All right, don't be scared by all the functions here on the left. Just scroll down to where you see the main function, okay? So we're going to take a look at that first. And right off the bat, you see a base64 string and you see a SHA1 string. I think it's SHA1. Yeah, it's SHA1. Anyways, you know what we do when we see a strange base64 string? We have to decode it, right? So we're going to go back to our terminal for a second. And we're going to do echo and then the string and then pipe that into base64 tag D. All right, it says, nice job. You're far from done, though. Inside this binary file, hidden are a song name and its band's name. After finding out the song, the password is three consecutive words from its lyrics. All lowercase, words separated by an underscore. And it says base64 invalid input. Oh, it's because I forgot the equals at the end. I think there's two. Yeah, there's two. But that doesn't matter. Let's go back. And if you look down right under main, you'll find a get band name and a hint function. We're going to look at the get band name function first. Now, the decompiler isn't going to help you that much here. And I even loaded it into Ghidra, and I don't think that did much better. You're going to want to look at the disassembly for this. So here's the function in the disassembly. And if you scroll down, you'll see that there's some values being moved into variables. And then underneath that, you'll find some XOR operations happening between pairs of variables. So all you have to do is look at each variable that it's referring to here, and you'll see what it points to character wise. So if this is OX3C and it even shows the ASCII and the decimal for you as well. And 68 is OX59. And I completely skipped the first one, but var 98 would be OX3A and then var 64 would be 0x77. So what you're going to want to do is essentially XOR 0x3a with 0x77. And then for var underscore 80, you're going to XOR 0x3c with 0x59. And then you're going to do that seven more times. There's nine total XOR operations. So you're going to come out with nine characters, essentially. And that's going to be your band name. Now, let's go ahead and open up my solve script. We'll open that up in the background as well. And you'll notice I have different sections here, one for get band name, one for the hint, and then another one for try passwords. That's because there's kind of three different phases to this challenge. Technically four if you count the base64 part as one. But here's where I do the decoding of the band name. All I'm doing is grabbing those values that you saw from the XOR operations. In fact, I can pull this over here and let me pull the... assembly up over here. So you start off with 58 and 119 because if you look, var 98 refers to 58 decimal. I use decimal here because I thought it'd be easier just to XOR them and then print out the character at the end instead of having it in hex. And then as you can see, sometimes the ASCII isn't printable, so you, I couldn't really use that. So decimal seemed like the likely choice. So yeah, 58 is 0x3a and then 119 is 0x77, as you can see in the comment out to the right here. And then if we even look at the next pair, 60 and 89, 0x3c is 60 and 0x59 is 89. Okay, that makes sense. So to write the decoder, all I did was I looped through each tuple I made up here in band. So for I in band, that's going to get each tuple. So our first tuple will be 58 and 119, and it's going to XOR the first value of the tuple with the second value of the tuple. So first value being 58 and the second value being 119 for the first iteration. 
And then we're doing an end because I want to concatenate it all together, of course. And then we're just printing some separators out here since I did all the things you needed to solve for in the same script. So let's go ahead and just comment out the other sections that we have here. Just so we can do it part by part or piece by piece, okay? So let's run dot slash solve. And let me actually pull this over on the left here. Actually, let me go ahead and clear it. Now let's run it. All right, you'll notice the band name is Metallica. Okay, and that is a band name. Pretty famous band name, actually. They do heavy metal, I think. Anyways, that's not important. Let's go ahead and get the next section prepared. We'll uncomment the hint section and comment out the try password section. Now let's go back to the is assembler and we're going to look at the hint function now. And you'll notice there's more strange values. Now there is an XOR operation going on down here, but that's not what you want to do. What you want to look at is the similarity between all the values and looking at their decimal values will help you out greatly here. Notice how for a lot of these, there's not a whole lot of distance or difference between the values. So what does that make you think of? Potentially a rotation cipher, right? Because if you have a rotation cipher, oftentimes all the characters are going to be within a certain range. So they're going to have similar values or similar distances between the values. Okay. So what I did was since these are all pretty much unreadable except for the P's, I just made a rotation function essentially that allows you to rotate through all the different shifts up to 256. Technically, there's only 255 shifts because if you do 256 shifts, even though there's 256 ASCII characters, it just goes back to the original starting point. So, but I still include it in here anyways. And that's all this function you see here does. And I probably should have pointed out that I was talking about this function, but let me go ahead and walk you through it. This I number represents the different shifts. And then we're going to call this rot function I made up here. And we're going to rotate and we're going to pass it in bytes dot from hex hint. And what I did was I just took all the hex values and strung them together and converted them to bytes because I couldn't just convert them to ASCII or UTF-8 because they don't decode properly since they're not readable. So I just use them as bytes essentially. And this was the easiest way for me to do it. So as you can see, 9D is 0x, 9D, B1 is 0x, B1 and so on and so forth. That's all there is to that portion. If we look at the actual rotation function here, you see I define like a little encryption string and I go for character and message and message is just our hint essentially, right? Converted to bytes. And then obviously the second value is the distance or the shift. And then we're gonna say value equals character plus shift, of course, because we're looping through each character and incrementing by the shift. And then we add the character value of value mod 256, because if you keep shifting upwards, you're going to go past 255. And since the values can only range from zero to 255, which is 256 values, you need to mod by 256 in order to properly get the actual shift in case it needs to wrap around, right? Because once you get to 255, you need to wrap back around to zero and so on and so forth, right? Depending on whatever the shift is. And so then we're just going to return the encrypted string. And then I set a decrypted variable to that function, of course. And then I just print out the index or the shift plus the decoded string. But it's going to print every single iteration of it, right? Every single of the 256 possible combinations. Because we don't know what the hint is going to look like. So we kind of have to brute force it in a way. Now that we have that out of the way, I hope that made sense. Let's go ahead and run that. And if we scroll up, we'll notice that at 176, we have some plain text here that says Master of Puppets. And there is a Metallica song called Master of Puppets. If you Google it, well, I had to Google. I didn't actually know there was a song called that. I had to Google it. But anyways, let's go ahead and just take note of this, right? Let's put Metallica here. And then let's put 176 Master of Puppets. And that's just for some extra notes in case we need to refer back to them. Now we get to the final bit, which is actually trying the different passwords. Remember, the password is going to be a string of three lowercase consecutive words from the lyrics separated by underscores. 
So we just need to try every combination of consecutive words until we hit one that works. And I wrote a little Pwn tool script in order to do so, right? Because we can totally write Pwn tools scripts to test our local binaries. It doesn't just have to be for Pwning, it can be for reverse engineering as well. And here's what I did. I grabbed the lyrics from the internet and I can even show you where I got them from if you want. I think I literally just typed in Metallica Master of Puppets, just like that. And I scrolled down and I went to the actual Metallica website. I clicked on the Master of Puppets song and I grabbed all this. I did a little bit of modification beforehand and I can kind of show you what I did. I just did a control H and I replaced all the new lines with a space. And make sure you have this selected extended so it actually picks up on the escape characters. And then you'll notice that there's some tabs here as well. So I went ahead and got rid of the tabs and replaced those with a space, I believe. Actually, no, I think I replaced those with nothing since there's always a space with a tab in there. So let's try that instead. Okay, yeah, that's looking better. And then there's still some double spaces left over. So I went ahead and replaced those as well. And then that's all you have to do with this because the script takes care of everything else. Let's actually go back to the script now that you kind of see that. And I, again, I just took this right click copied and I pasted it directly into my script. Now, if we go to the end of the lyrics, you'll notice I have a dot lower because the password has to be lowercase according to the instructions. At least I think they said that. If I scroll back up, oh, well, I don't have the instructions anymore. That's fine. It does need to be lowercase. And then I do a loop to check for specials and I just import the string library and the string library has a punctuation key to it. So I just loop through each special character in string dot punctuation and I replace it with nothing inside the lyrics. Okay. And then I split the lyrics by space because we're going to loop through them and combine each set of three substrings with an underscore. I do with context quiet to kind of silence the output from home tools because it's kind of annoying. Then I go for I in range of the length of lyrics, right? Because we want to loop through all the lyrics. We do password equals, and then we join the substring of lyrics. So if we take this first substring, right? I to I plus three would be end of passion because remember I plus three, if I is zero on our first iteration, right? If I is zero, it'll be zero to zero plus three. So zero to three, but the second number would be subtracted by one, right? So it would actually be zero to index of two. When you picture this as a list, right? Because all these will be split up into pieces like end of passion play will all be separate items in the list because of how we split it here. It'll be end underscore of underscore passion because end is zero, passion is two, and that's the substring that we're slicing by here. And then we launch the process, of course, the local process, and we send line after the colon space because that's where it tells us to enter the password. And then of course, remember it's Python three, so we need to make sure that we're sending bytes in rather than a string. And then we just select the output from that. And then we check if try again is in the output, because remember if the password is wrong, the output will say this is wrong, try again, or whatever it said. When we did it earlier, it said something similar to that. So we're checking to see if try again is not in the output. And if it's not in the output, we know that we got the right password. OK, so let's go ahead and run this. All right, there you go. We got it. It says come crawling faster is our password. So let's go ahead and make sure that that's accurate by checking it with the program itself. So we'll enter that in. And there you go, it says success. So this should be our flag. So we should be able to just enter it in. And there we go. All right, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comment section down below. This is Amon Milt. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.